everyone, Andrew here, and welcome to today's video where we're going to be looking at the tabletop version of the Mario Cement Factory Game & Watch. Uh, this is a Game & Watch I did not own back when I did my 30 days of Game & Watch, kind of month of reviews, uh, but now that I have my hands on it, I definitely thought it'd be fun to introduce to everyone because uh, these tabletop Game & Watches are just so cool, and I feel like just seeing a picture of it doesn't really do them justice. It's hard to understand just how big they are or exactly how they work, uh, so I hope that this video kind of clears all of those things up for you. Uh, of course, on my channel before, we have looked at a Mario Cement Factory Game & Watch, and that was the new widescreen model, so there's quite the difference here in size, uh, and the games themselves are a little bit different, though it's basically the same, but uh, you know, some of the graphics and such, as you'll see, have been changed. The tabletop version was released on April 28th, 1983, while the new widescreen model was released on June 16th, 1983. And then just for fun, the Famicom was released July 15th, 1983, so it was a very interesting Interesting and busy time for Nintendo and Mario, I suppose. Uh, but this thing is just so neat, and again, uh, I feel like just when you see uh, pictures and stuff out there, uh, it doesn't do it justice. It's kind of funny though, calling it a game and watch still. It definitely like actually is branded as such. Uh, but this thing is about as portable as the Virtual Boy is portable. It's it's uh, it's really bizarre. Uh, you probably wouldn't want to carry this around on the bus to work or whatever and use it to keep the time. Unlike uh, you know like the new widescreen models of Game and Watch and such, where it would be much more reasonable to just have it in your pocket and such uh, and take it out. So game and clock might be a more uh, accurate description of this. It does still, however, include alarm and time functionality and such. So if you put it by your bedside, uh, I could see it working that way. But with that said, enough kind of talk. Let's jump into getting a closer look at this thing and actual gameplay. So here we are with the close-up. Hopefully you can get kind of a good view of just how everything looks here. That's where you look into. Here are the controls. Uh, overall, the sides don't really have too much going on. Just kind of that solid color there. Uh, on top, you get this white panel that light passes through, which then takes the image that's on top and projects it down into a mirror that is what you look at while you're playing the game. This is actually identical to how the panorama screen Game & Watches work that we have looked at previously on my channel, including this one right here, Donkey Kong Jr. Uh, and Popeye, where when open like this, the light passes through this white panel, projects that uh, image that's on the top down onto the mirror, which you then look at while you're playing. And it just overall looks very nice, but it means that you need a well-lit room to really uh, play these things. Otherwise your picture's gonna look kind of dim, but then none of the Game & Watches are backlit, except for, I guess, the new Mario one that just came out. So uh, you're gonna want a lot of light when you're playing your Game & Watch games anyway. Uh, and on the bottom, you get your battery cover uh, and that. Uh, so as in terms of batteries for the Game & Watch, you actually have to put two C batteries batteries in there and that's like uh, you know huge compared to the batteries we're normally used to our game and watches taking anyone who's watched my month of reviews will know that there's a whole bunch of different batteries that different models of game and watches take uh, but C battery definitely takes the cake uh, for the biggest so we might as well uh, do that now so we're just gonna gently open this so you kind of want to push down where that arrow is and slide then you can pull out this cover and then you have kind of a nice clean view right there of where the batteries go into and we will reapply the cover, just like that. And now if we look inside, you can see the game. And of course, this is how it looks before you set the timer such. It shows all the different kinds of panels lit up there. Uh, and if we put our hand over the top so that light can't pass through, there goes the picture. So again, it's very important that uh, nothing is kind of obstructing the top there. In terms of the size, say you don't have a tape measure, uh, you know, you're not too worried about being super accurate, you can grab yourself an NES cartridge and uh, it's about the same size as an NES cartridge tilted sideways in case you're trying to kind of measure just how much space you need inside your cabinets and it's about an NES cart width on the front as well. Uh, and then again, compared to uh, the new widescreen model, uh, the new widescreen model alone is just kind of like the space where the screen is, uh, and it is otherwise pretty darn small. Uh, so differences between this game include the fact, and uh, the new widescreen one, include the fact that the cement is not delivered by trucks, and rather it kind of just comes down a chute, but we'll see all that uh, as we're playing. I'm going to zoom in now, and we're going to set the time, although one more thing I suppose I should mention 
is that this stick right here is rather interesting. Uh, it's not like a real kind of control stick we're used to these days. It only moves left and right because that is all that is required by this game. For other games uh, that require movement in other directions, the stick will move in those directions as well, but this stick has been made specifically to only go left and right. Otherwise you get your game A, B, and time buttons, which was kind of give that time demonstration, which I guess I might as well, can you see that hopefully? Uh, right now by using the stick, I'm setting the hours and then the button on the right sets the minutes and then by pressing time, uh, it will jump into that demonstration while we watch the clock. And of course, game A or B will jump into those games. ACL will allow you to set the time again and reset your score. And alarm will allow you to set the alarm, which we'll probably look at afterwards. Uh, so yeah, there it goes. But with that said, I'm probably going to zoom in so you can all get a much better look at the screen. And we're going to do some gameplay. And there's your nice kind of close look at the screen. Hopefully everyone can see that all right. Uh, the screen is just so vibrant and nice looking. You would almost swear that it was backlit, but again, it's kind of just that light coming in from the top where if you put your you know hand over that white panel, uh, the light doesn't shine through and it doesn't look nearly as nice. Uh, overall though, as you can see, if anyone has seen my gameplay of Mario Cement Factory, uh, the new widescreen model, or if you have seen my Game & Watch Gallery 4 gameplay, uh, you'll be familiar with this game, but it's all about Mario kind of uh, working in the cement factory, making sure that nothing overflows and gets down to the truck just fine. So I'm going to press the game A button. Okay, so now I am starting to control the game. Uh, and as I said, uh, rather than trucks delivering, uh, trucks or carts delivering the cement to the vat as they do in the new widescreen model, uh, they kind of just fall out of these... Uh, of these shoots at the top of the screen. So it's definitely a different take on it. Uh, with the carts, I, th I feel like you get a little bit more of a view uh, of what's coming. And also in this version, Mario hangs on to a chain or rope at the bottom of the screen uh, to prevent him from kind of falling off. Uh, unlike in the new widescreen model where it is kind of just a little uh, alcove that he ducks into. Now I cannot get out of here because I need to have two platforms lined up at the same time. Uh, and I just couldn't do it. The platform was just not coming. Uh, and once one of the kind of uh, vats has three layers of cement in it, you will get that annoying beeping sound indicating that you better hurry on up and uh, dump it down to the next level before things overflow. Now, anyone who has watched my uh, Game & Watch Gallery 4 stream will know that I can play some Mario Cement Factory like all day long. So I'll try not to keep you here for too long uh, with the gameplay demonstration, but hopefully this gives you a good idea of just how things look. Hopefully the kind of, you know, quality is okay. Uh, the screen is kind of really, you know, in there. Rather, it's not really a screen, but rather a mirror that's reflecting uh, the lit up panels. Uh, so you kind of have to zoom in a little bit, but hopefully the quality is still decent enough for everyone to understand what's going on. Uh, it does really kind of all come down to the timing of the platforms in the middle, though, and trying to line those up. Uh, that was really bad at the beginning. I just could not get too lined up at the very bottom. I was trying to demonstrate that chain down there, uh, and that was kind of my undoing. Uh, it's best just to not go down there at all, really. Otherwise, though, the sound is very clear. You get kind of that, uh, you know, music at the beginning that introduces you to everything. And there's that annoying beeping sound again, because there's three on this side. But we're going to fix that. Ah, that was a little risky there, but it worked out. Aha. Uh, it's very interesting playing it with the control stick. It's definitely easier, I feel, to play it with the, with the D-pad. It's not even really a D-pad. It's kind of, you know, the buttons... Uh, assembled in the shape of a D-pad, or rather there's not even an up and a down, so it's, it's really like half a D-pad. Uh, but yeah, the stick is interesting too. It almost reminds me of the control stick on the PlayChoice 10, another Nintendo kind of cabinet uh, I have done a review on. I definitely recommend checking that out if you have not seen that. Uh, it's pretty much like an NES arcade machine. That's always fun. Uh, and I think I got myself mushed at the top. There you go. I anticipated that there would be a platform to jump onto, and there was not means that we have one more life to go. Uh, after we play the game, I will be demonstrating the alarm so everyone can give that a listen. And as mentioned, these definitely serve better as like a bedside clock than, you know, a uh, portable clock or watch as other Game & Watch models perhaps do. Is that uh, the bottom one going to set up a beeping too? No, just the top ones. Interesting. 
There is actually also a chain in the top right that Mario can grab onto as well, uh, and that's exclusive to this version. Sometimes I kind of forget it's even there. Uh, it's not in the Game & Watch Gallery 4 remake, nor is it in the new widescreen model. Of course, Mario working at a cement factory is... Uh, very interesting. Mario has had all sorts of different odd jobs over the years, and as mentioned in one of my uh, recent videos when we looked at standees, uh, construction worker kind of being the newest one. Uh, I love his kind of uh, construction outfit ensemble that he gets in the Mario Maker games. Mario working odd jobs, just kind of like a staple of his character, and we didn't see that you know too much in recent years, so I was really happy when Mario Maker uh, brought that back. Uh, it'd be really cool if Nintendo kind of made another compilation of Game & Watch games someday. Oh, there we go. Alright, so you had a really big celebration at 100 points, which is something that you don't uh, see in the new widescreen model, or in really many Game & Watches. Uh, I feel like it's kind of the tabletop ones and the panorama ones which get really excited uh, when you hit multiples of 100 for whatever reason. I'm trying my best not to kind of jolt the screen when I move, uh, because again, it's not just like nice buttons I can press. I gotta, I have to uh, kind of you know jolt this whole uh, control stick underneath. Things are getting a little bit faster now, though. Remember, this was mode A, uh, so mode B would be even more difficult and crazier. Um, okay, uh -oh, we're stuck at the bottom again, everybody, and I just have no control now. Like, there we go. Can we make it up there in time? Where's all the platforms? Wow, that, that, that was really lucky. We got that side to worry about now. But yeah, the strategy for playing Mario Cement Factory is... Oh, wow! Of course what happens is if you drop uh, cement from the top down into one of the lower ones and it's already full, then it will still spill over and, uh, you know, land on the guy in the truck. But the strategy is uh, I just work in that kind of counter uh, counterclockwise circle. Uh, and that typically works out pretty well for me. But hey, there you go. Uh, like I said, I didn't want it to go on all day anyway. I think everyone understands how the gameplay works. Uh, and hopefully you get a good idea too for just how it looks. It's high, again, it's kind of hard to, uh, you know, get good video of the mirror because it's really kind of you know, back there. Like, it's it's way in there. Uh, but hopefully you enjoyed that, and we are now going to demonstrate the alarm functionality. Okay, so here we are at the end of our completed game still. Let's press the time button to send us back to uh, time mode where it shows the time in the top left while just showing some demonstration gameplay. It looks like it is currently set to 319 PM. So let's set the alarm for uh, shortly after that. Uh, and we're going to want to take a toothpick here and press in that tiny alarm button. Got to make sure you actually get in there and press it. There we go. Uh, and now we are in the process of setting the alarm. So 319 PM. Let's set it for like 321. And as you change the alarm uh, time, the picture shown on screen will change along with it. So you can kind of make your own you know, stop motion movie here. Uh, and now that it is set to what we want it to be, uh, we do not press the alarm button again because that would turn the alarm back off, but instead we press time. Uh, and you can tell that the alarm is set because there is now a little alarm symbol uh, located at the bottom left, uh, right here beside this truck. So it looks like in one minute, the alarm's gonna go off and I'll let you hear how that sounds. And there you go, that is how Mario Cement Factory will wake you up in the morning. It's not the most elegant uh, by any means, but it gets the job done, I guess, if you have no other means of waking up. And it will just continue until, uh, can we do something to turn it off here? <laughs> Darn it, what button is it to turn it off? Okay. <laughs> this is the part where the character just throws it out the window because it won't stop. It doesn't, like, you can start the game, um, but, you know, time, I don't know why it wouldn't stop. <laughs> Obviously, you can take your toothpick back out and press the alarm button again. That seems kind of, uh, you know, overdone. But that is Mario's Cement Factory Tabletop Edition. Uh, very, very cool, and definitely a big change from the new widescreen model. Can't press time to get out of that. There are some later Game & Watches where you can actually press the time button if they, maybe you've pressed the game by accident and want to get out of it. 
But yeah, it's definitely a change from the new widescreen model, which you can see, you know, side by side. Definitely have all the same things going on, uh, but they look very, very different. But they're still uh, both very cool, and obviously whichever one you can get your hands on, uh, they are both Awesome, so I hope you enjoyed seeing that tabletop game and watch, something I had never reviewed before, never really had my hands on before until recently, so I really enjoyed having a look at it, and I hope that you enjoyed that as well. Please let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I hope you'll join me next time for something different. So thanks, and see you later. Thank you so much once again for checking out my videos. I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and subscribing as it really helps my channel out. With that said, hope to see you next time.